star keeps on falling, cold, wet, unyielding. But underneath, I hear the sound of flowing water, soft and gentle, like a mother's lullaby. Math is not so different from creative writing. Math, walang CSM, no? <laughs> Math is speculative fiction when you think about it, di ba? It's, it's a world where may internal logic lang siya that makes sense there and it's built up on one truth after another. And that's what we do in fiction. We weave worlds based on what is true, what, like one step or another. I don't, um, well, I grew up in a math home. My father teaches math, writes math books. I went to math camps, <laughs> so that was my childhood. And then um, in, in our program, the value you're allowed to take an elective. So I took CW100 on a whim. Oh, so you were really like I, I did internship, yes, BS math. But even if I pursued math, I was still, you know, um, obsessed with water. <laughs> I was studying in Napier Stokes in fluid dynamics, which is like, it's a, gener it's a set of equation that tries to make, sorry to disappoint, what were you expecting? No, not disappointed. I'm just surprised, is all. Mr. Tai continued to pass over the creation, as if momentarily forgetting that I was standing there. Um, present in the place. And it also comes from this, siguro, protectiveness of the place. Like, I don't want to self-orientalize, um, but I want to depict what I know about the place and the truth that I know about the place. Um, Hmm, does it come consciously? I guess you are aware that you need to be careful. I, there is that, yung awareness. But it's not really like a nagging thing at the back of your head that parang almost calls you out every time you write something. But it's always there, and I think it's important to to be ano, um, to be careful, uh, especially kung wari nga like sinama, ano, and I'm not from that group. Um, how do you um, write about yeah. them? It's actually my next question. Because, ah, cultural uh, appropriate. No, 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 no. Uh, because in the story... I don't know about categorization, yes. but I do understand why they're needed and why they're there. I guess mostly for marketing. <laughs> when your book's out there, they have to know where to shelf it with, you know, what sort of author they have to um, place it, yeah. put it next to. So, sure. But um, when I wrote, for instance, Sama Selang, people would... Um, categorize it under transhumanism, marvelous realism, surrealism. But for me, these were just tales that I grew up listening to with mga mangingisda. Because both, like, I come from a long line of fisher folks. My grandparents from both sides were both fishermen. And we, um, uh, the, my mother's side of the family is a family compound. Kanang bularan siya. So it's where they deliver dry um, fish na hindi na fresh for it to be dried. So like, I was surrounded by fisher folks my whole life, and they would talk about ito mga um, tales nila out in the open sea. So I guess in that sense, it's always been natural right there. But when you start crafting, you, you do make deliberate decisions, and there are certain tropes that certain genres follow, so you are aware of that. So siguro like, um, when the gem of a story arrives, you're not, you, like, you tend to shut down muna that critical side of your brain. But once you do the talks about yung mga genre conventions, etc., you just want to entertain the story. It's when I realize, when I start, ah, okay, this this looks like um, um, a specific story. Because when you're done, when you're in the revising an inherent stage, that's when you start considering where to submit it to. Yeah. And when you think of it that way, ayun na, um, yung genres. Yeah. Um, with sci-fi, I think sci-fi you must deliberate. Na parang, um, I think one that is strictly sci-fi, the others major slip stream and clear as, clear as water, it is ruined, yeah, which was my attempt at um, having our own version of a first contact story. <laughs> and that's the story that I wrote. Are we live? No, not live. Okay, of Summer was first workshopped in Global Grace LGBTQ workshop where I first met Professor Joanna Cruz and it was ultimately anthologizing Tango. Um, I, I wanted to write about uh, a happy story that's not, it is a love story because they were former lovers, but then I want to write a happy breakup story. Now, it's not 
happy in the sense that, you know, there were um, beach songs after, but then it's happy in the sense that um, you were able to emancipate from what was once pulling you down or stopping you from growth. And I think there is virtue in learning when to say goodbye to. So I just wanted to write the story on goodbyes that is celebratory in that sense. And it's queer, it's a queer story because I'm queer. So some little snippets of that might have come from personal experience, but you know, it's fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. Okay. Um. Full characters that are beyond like being a tausu or cinema, for example. So um, for instance, in the title story, um, it's about uh, two Muslim brothers. Um, and they first came to be really as just one mathematician and one who was like, you know, um, a local fighter. Um, but then, you mathematician aspect really was an inspiration from my mom's childhood best friend, who was also named Omar. He was a mathematician, he also studied in UP, but then had to go home to Zamboanga to do, you know, family stuff. But whenever I had like um, snippets of math stuff that I wanted to talk with him, if not my dad, si Tito Omar, so I, um, the people that I grew up with, when you come from a city like Zamboanga, now everyone is a settler somehow, and it's really a portal to all these different groups. But um, they're human to you, they're real to you. So I know, like, um, just how I, I learned, uh, I, I got to know them that way. I hope that I also depicted them that way in my works. That's what I like about that character, because that character, who happens to be Kausu, mm -hmm. is very serious about mathematics. You know, so the character is not about their ethnicity; it's about mm -hmm. what their desire is, what their, what their, what they want to happen. And at the same time, there's also, of course, an acknowledgement of, of where they're coming from. And I guess, like, for the benefit of the students, that's the advantage of writing about your own place mm -hmm. and not someone else's place. And, and, um, some this but it was happen, yeah. but sure, you know, your magazine <laughs> is looking for spec thing, fine. Yeah. Uh -oh. it, these labels are just, you know, um, useful for those who will look at the stories from the perspective of um, Outside. a technician or like a, a specialist or a taxonomist, mm -hmm. no? But as a storyteller, you probably felt that these are just, these are blurry, you know? Sometimes, like, even myself, if I write a real, I, don't, I am writing a realist story. Well, it's not like that. No? I just if, what the story is. The story is. Um, it's funny how people think that yung, the realist stories are the ones based on real life. Actually, Ikoi was based on real life. Like we had, and, and the name Ikoi was from that. Oh, okay, person <laughs> But like he really looked like a shokoi. There's this Ikoi persona that just appeared. Or doorstep, but I mean, that um, and then we thought that when that little boy was there, we had good luck in the family. Um, the ending, because real life is not as exciting as stories, um, the ultimately ending was Ikoi found his um, biological parents and he was sent to Palawan. So I, I met Ikoi again when I graduated. Yes, I just say, <laughs> like, my friends and I are now in our first year of teaching, so Reggie, and uh, who's my like pretty close best friend. Um, I told her how in college, because I went to Diliman, I always felt like, medyo cultural representative ka, written now. You're like the cultural representative, which like I, I hated, and it's so difficult. Um, Yes, but I have to explain everything in my story. Whereas if I had Mindanaoan readers, like on Tinala, we already understand the context. And um, um, it's just that I wanted to write about Mindanao such that um, being a Mindanaoan also enhances your reading of it. But also, like if you're not, then you'd have some level of understanding of it. Uh, not entirely, but I hope like the story is at least depicted, you know, the place to the best of my um, ability. But uh, yeah, and, um, huh. it's a little bit of both, na parang, of course, because my stories are grounded really to Zamboanga, just like yours is with Davao, but um, it's inevitable for you to you know, situate yourself as a Mindanao there, but also, parang, um, we don't demand the same of authors 
from the center. Parang do you ano negotiating ang manila niyo? Parang why why do they they they're not ask that? Straight people. Yes. Oh oh, de ba? Parang oh oh. So straight people should come out the straight people. Yes. I yeah. The the norm now is assume gay. Yes. Even without the trail of footprints that I knew was hers, I was certain where to find her. She was there in our usual spot, with our model, drenched and looking longingly at the scene. Gray mud splattered the length of her legs, and she just sat there toying with her fruit knife. She wasn't surprised at all when she saw me. I was, um, not the man positive, but like, I didn't really question identity, sexuality in college. It's like, napaka heteronormative, lumaking ganon. Like, I started um, exploring it after college, so because it spans that time, and yung seven stories from my thesis, for instance, it's me not even being aware of that identity yet, or, or not being consciously aware of it. And then later on, the stories that I produced after university, yung agenda, oh, I'm gay. <laughs> Ayan, but, but they're explicitly gay. So I'm not sure really kung paano siya, but with the lesbian stories, I wanted to write um, happy, joyful, celebratory women in STEM kind of stories na, you know, um, beyond the usual tragic gay lovers. So, yun. Um, with those four stories, I was aware. And they were first published in anthologies that were for LGBTQ talaga na ano, issue. Um, I, didn't I didn't answer the question though. It's something <laughs> that I perhaps need to siguro explore pa. Like, how does my being a queer woman manifest in my story, if it, if, even if they're not explicitly gay? Ikaw ba? Call a friend. Well, actually, well, uh, can I tell you uh, um, how it was for me as a reader when I, because like Mom Joanna, Prof. Joanna said that it is marketed as a book of um, Stories about water, about people living within bodies of water. And of course, I, I know you through the last of Sama Salang. And so I, I didn't even think of the speculative part. Like I just wanted to see what Sigrid was, was writing about specifically. And to me, it was the Zamboanga, the, the, the construction of Zamboanga in your imagination that was very strong. I mean, really interested in that kind of impulse. Then when I encounter the lesbians, it's like, oh, hi, lesbians, you're there. <laughs> so as a queer reader myself, it feels like, oh, I feel safe, you know, because this is, this is a narrative that is told from the perspective of, of a queer person from, from Mindanao, you know, from the Philippines, from Mindanao, not just any place. So um, as a queer reader, uh, that's how I felt, like, oh, hi, you know, <laughs> so here. Yeah, you're here, oh, hi. So, it, it kind of like enhances my it enhances my my reading of the non-lesbian stories. Like it, it just affects them. Like this is told from the perspective of a queer author. So not that I would overread. Like I would like oh there's a ionic symbol whatever. No, <laughs> not that. But it's just like there, I would I would feel like uh, the the rhythm and the 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 the, the hymn tone, the inner music of the stories would be from the perspective of a queer author. I mean, I, I'm constructing that in my head, and, and it, it feels like, oh, this is why this character sympathizes with that kind of treatment with this other character. This is why this um, this relationship between siblings is like this and that, and their parents. I'm watchful of the relationship between your young characters and their parents as well. After like encountering like the so oh, I guess from <laughs> from the perspective of a reader, I think that's how it colors. The... Now it makes me think about my stories. How many, how many... <laughs> oh my God! How did they see the others? Anyway.